My son-in-law and I are building this 12 by 16 storage shed that features a roll-up door and two interior storage lofts. Now today's video is part five in the series and it, it covers the installation of an asphalt roof with two skylight vents. But let me start with a disclaimer. I have a bit of experience with roofing, but I'm certainly not a professional and I make mistakes. In fact, I make a pretty big mistake near the end of this video and rather than edit out to look perfect, I'll show you exactly what I did wrong and how we fixed it. Once upon a time, a boy met a girl working for a mouse. They fell in love and realized they'd never own their own home working for the mouse. So they packed up a big truck and moved to New Jersey, lived in a basement to save money for a year, and bought a foreclosure to fix up while they lived there. This is their story. This project is proudly sponsored by Nailgun Depot and Everwin Pneumatic Tools. What we are installing now is cheap insurance, these things. They are hurricane ties. We don't get a lot of hurricanes here in New Jersey, but we do get some. So they just go on and what they do is they tie the wall framing to, or I should say they tie the rafters to the wall framing. And then that way, you know, big wind won't pull the roof off. Next step is to put the roof on. And uh, what we've got here is the plywood overhangs, you can see that, it overhangs too far. So if we were to put the, the drip edge here, you could see underneath it. And that'd be a place for, you know, wasps to nest and things like that. So it can, it has to be trimmed back and it, it can be a little bit short, but it can't be too long because otherwise it makes that stick out. Don't move it, don't move it down. Oi, I hate going down. Shrek, I'm looking down. Shrek, I'm looking down. Good. Because of the insane prices of building materials in the summer of 2021, I was very tempted to use metal roofing on this shed but I decided to stick with asphalt because it matches the house and I'd done shingling before. I never installed a metal roof, and although it doesn't look very difficult, it would have taken more time to figure it out and order the materials. So I just played it safe and I ordered the asphalt shingles with the rest of the building materials. The most important roofing principle, regardless of the material you choose, is always to work from the bottom to the top. So that means this aluminum drip edge goes on first and then everything layers above that. The purpose of the drip edge is to prevent water from wicking back under the shingles and the roof sheathing. And that means the wood stays drier and the shed lasts longer. So at this point, we got the drip edge on the front. That's what goes on first. And then we're putting down the, this is 30 pound roofing felt. This just creates a layer between the shingles and uh, the roof itself. Makes it easier to replace the roof in the future. And yeah, I guess it gives it a little bit of extra protection for water too, but we're gonna poke a whole bunch of holes in it with staples. So you could either use staples or you could use nails, but I happen to have this from years ago and I just prefer it. All right, so I'm just gonna roll this out as straight as possible. Okay, that's good for now. We can leave it long, we can trim it if we need to, or it could just curl under the drip edge. And then we're just gonna... See how easy that is? Easy as can be when you got something like that. <laughs> The next thing to go on are these starter shingles, and they are scored down the middle, and they have the uh, the goop that sticks to the roof on both sides. So all you have to do is snap them down the middle, and this is known as the starter course. And uh, they go not only down by the the drip edge on the edge of the roof, but they're also going to go up this side of the roof as well. 
and always overlap coming down. So we always start at the bottom, work our way up. So first things first, this one is gonna go right down, even with the corner and flat down the edge. You can overlap it a little bit, you know, just to make sure, but the next layer is gonna come over that anyway. So I'm just gonna tack this in place. And right now I'm just using one inch nails. I also have inch and a half for later when I'm putting the shingles on. Okay. And then this one is gonna come down here. Notice it's overlapping. Even with the edge, actually a little bit overlapping. The edge is nice and smooth. And then I'm gonna put a nail here through both of these. And this is just going to hold them in place for now because when the shingles go on, they are going to be nailed all the way through these. And the glue here sticks to the bottom of the shingles there. And uh, that's what adheres everything together so that when wind blows and whatnot, it doesn't blow water underneath it. Okay, so these are the shingles and they exactly match what you have on the roof, which is a good thing. And they're an architectural shingle, so they're really double layer. This is the part you see. This is the part that gets covered by the next shingle. So look, I'll take two off. See how that covers over that? And it gives you a nice, you go from the bottom to the top, working our way up. The trouble is, you can't have your seams in line, okay? Otherwise, water will go through. So what we need to do is we need to offset them. And when you offset them, that puts your seam here, and you can put another full sheet that way right seams don't overlap you're good but that means this part here is scrap okay so what we're going to wind up doing is we're going to create what's known as a book and that is you have a full sheet then a shorter sheet then a shorter sheet then a shorter sheet all the way up you make like a pyramid mm -hmm. and that enables us to put the book on the left hand side we work to the right with full sheets all the way to the other edge and that's how we do it now to cut shingles you don't want to use a regular uh, utility knife blade, but you do want to use the utility knife. You just want to put in these hook blades. They work much better when you're talking about cutting shingles. So now, hook blade. Now these architectural shingles are random, so normal shingles have to be cut precisely every six inches, and there's a little notch that tells you where the six inch mark is. But these, not so precise, so you just kind of wing it. Find a good spot and then just cut through it. And cutting through the second part is hard. All right, and then we're gonna save this for the other end. It'll go down there eventually. We'll put that aside and we'll put that aside. And then we're gonna come over here Gonna just do the same thing. All right, so I brought the whole book. And of course, they're facing the wrong way. But notice, because we cut, these don't line up the same. So that's good. That's the way it has to be. And we're just gonna overlap just a little bit. And we're gonna make it even with the edge because you don't wanna you don't wanna see a jagged edge. I mean it's only a shing, it's only a uh, shed, so it's not that critical, but now when we nail, we're nailing through the layer below it. And these I'm using inch and a half nails for. Overlaps this one, and then that overlaps this one, and so on. And then we can put full shingles going out this way. 
you just need to cover that previous thing. Just keep it nice and even with that that edge right here. All right, and then it'll look good. Okay, book done. Now we just need some full sheets and lay them up. ago I put a couple paint swatches on the shed and uh, asked you guys your opinion most of you chose the dark gray and that is the one we went with what do you think while Josh and I worked on the roof Julie her mom and Aunt Kathy applied the first coat of paint on the siding using brushes and a thick nap roller it definitely needed the second coat too there is one thing about t111 siding you can see that where it meets there for the soffit there's absolutely a hole there that uh, paper wasps and whatnot would get up there. So you just want to make sure you caulk those. It doesn't have to be pretty because it's going to be painted, but you just got to cover them up. We got the first four rows all the way across and two layers of the tar paper. And on this edge is where we're going to use the cut book that we, you know, the scraps from the original book. We're going to use them over here. So you can see that needs a piece. So that goes there. And then this one will go here. And this one will go here. And then we'll just trim it off even with the edge when we're all done. I'll put a nice sharp blade on and we'll just cut it down. So this drip edge, which goes on the rake board, the rake board is the, the one on the gable. I used one piece and I cut it so that it's kind of straight. Eh, it's a little bit bent, but that's okay. But it's kind of straight and in line with that, uh, that trim. But in any case, that way it bends over the top of the ridge like that. And it's one continuous piece. Now, of course, I'll leave that loose down that end and I'll put the other piece underneath it. This has to be on top of that piece down there. All right, let's go. Show us how it's done. Boom. Very nice. Look at you on the roof. After the front of the roof was done, we started the back the same way. Okay. First the drip edge at the bottom, then the tar paper, then the drip edge up the side covers the edge of the tar paper. Then the starter course of shingles at the bottom, followed by the starter course up the side, and finally the book of six shingles goes on before we can start adding the full ones. All right, well, if you're gonna ventilate your shed, you might as well use a vented skylight. I think that's pretty cool because it's, it's actually kind of translucent plastic and it, it lets not only air in, but it lets light in as well. And you can see how that looks from the inside. It actually has a template right on the back. So I marked where my rafter is, that's here. So I don't wanna cut where the rafter is, I wanna make sure I'm over further. So I think now from the edge, we'll probably put it, we'll put the hole 52 inches from the edge and then it has to be eight inches wide. So 52 and 60. We're gonna put it, this will be the top, and 10 inches for the bottom, so. Whoops, not there, here. That, that, and that. That's what I'm gonna cut.
I can't see my line. That's that's not good. <laughs> This shed light product can also be used for retrofit installations. So if you've already got a shed that's existing, you can cut right through the shingles and tuck this up underneath it. It doesn't have to be new construction like this. And they say not to put any sealant around it. They say that these little ridges built into it are enough to channel the water away. That it, it's just <laughs> no sealant, no caulk, nothing. Okay. That's that. All right, so I cut a piece to fit this side and I cut eight inches off. So that will go to that side. And then this one will go above. And everything should line up very nicely. Here comes that mistake I told you about. All right, we are severely losing light, but we are up to the ridge. Uh, these are the, the ridge shingles. They come in a strip of three like this. And there's there's actually a perforation in there. And uh, you just break them apart. And uh, I'll try and show you how they go on. All right, so we are lucky because these go on here. Oh, no, like this, actually. I think. Huh. No, I would say that is the exposed part, yes, because this is a little bit narrower. So that's the exposed part. That goes there, and we are lucky. We are just going to cover these lines when I put that on. These get put on two nails and just keep going across. It goes like that and I just keep working across the roof oh, this is painful to watch some guys would have edited this out this goes through the previous one below but I leave it in because I want you guys to learn from my mistakes good Well, that is the end of a very long day. You can see it is completely dark. But we got... The roof is at least done enough. It is watertight. We need some more ridge cap shingles. And we got two, one extra bundle of shingles. So, And we also obviously have to trim it. But uh, as far as the coming hurricane, Ida... We should be okay. It's definitely watertight. So, whoo, baby, what a day. But it looks good. Look at it painted. Wow. So Hurricane Ida came through New Jersey with a vengeance, but we didn't get it too bad here. And uh, good news is nothing leaked. And the bad news is I put all the ridge caps on backwards because it was so dark and I didn't take the time to read the bag so and you can see I really did a bad job here I've got exposed nails so anyway these all got to come off it turns out that the dark part is the part that you nail through and the gray part is the part that's exposed so I put the nails in the wrong place on all of them got to rip them out we've got a new one that's got to go on so dad can't fix stupid but he can fix what stupid does well, today I'm stupid. Good? Yep.
Okay, so these are just like the uh, the edge shingles. They are perforated, and we just have to snap them into three parts. <laughs> so just to reiterate, the shiny part is the part that's gonna be hidden. This is the part that matches the rest of the roof. I couldn't see that at night. Just gonna overlap it and nail through the black part, <laughs> the dark part. <laughs> Uh, live and learn. And then, you can see two thirds of it is exposed here. The dark part is the part that gets covered. See, they stick up a little bit, but once they heat up in the sun, and it's just September for us right now, so they'll definitely heat up more. Not only will they curl, but they have glue underneath them on both sides, and the glue just adheres to the, the roof. All right, so here I've got exposed nails. So what I did is I cut off the, the end and this is gonna go like this. And I am gonna nail it down and then we'll come back with some clear silicone caulk and just cover up the nails for here and for the ones by the skylights. And then I'll just trim the edge off even. From that and we'd be done all right that is it silicone caulk real silicone and put it on these nails that are exposed and the nails on the, the skylights that are exposed and because these are galvanized nails so they won't <laughs> technically they're rust resistant but they will rust over time so we want to make sure that they are, um, you know, protected more. And one little detail that I didn't show is actually these corners where the drip edge at the bottom goes on first, but then the sides come on next. And I just cut these with a, a bit of a, I bent it over so that it wraps around a little bit. Just makes it nicer so when you look at it, you don't see, you know, a dark edge where they meet. Right now that we've corrected the ridge, the roof is absolutely complete, and uh, that's it for this episode. So thanks for watching, and stay tuned for what we're gonna do in the next one. Coming up in our next episode. Mama. Look at that, that's our door. We installed two of the main features of this shed. A storage loft. <laughs> what was that? And the roll-up door. Oh, uh, look at that. Wow. <laughs> that is so cool. Stay tuned. Be sure to subscribe and watch our new series, The Living Flip. Ooh. And that has inch and a quarter. That's the little one. That's all I'm